and I'll be careful how I say with this, but before we f- so quick to feel sorry for those people on that video and say, boy, too bad they didn't have it the way we do here in America. I don't think I don't I don't think I I don't think I feel that way. Cause their Christianity, you know, is they're purchasing their Christianity and the right to, to serve Christ with, with their blood, their lives, their 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 families, their goods. And their Christianity is real and powerful and they're willing to die for it. And I don't think I would want to I don't think I'd want them to. I'm not so, you know, i got to be careful. It's easy for me to say I'm here in America, but I don't think I'd want them to have it the way we do here in America. Because, you know, what they have, look what it's, it's costing them so much, but, it's so, but it means so much more to them, I think. And I could be wrong. I met some Buddhist, excuse me, I met some um, Burmese refugees in Pasco, Washington back in January. And, um... They had suffered persecution from the Buddhists because of their Christianity. And I sat there and watched those people, and I thought, how beautiful, just watching them sing and worship, and they were so beautiful. And I thought, God help them. They're here in America now. I just, I thought, boy, I hope America, our materialism and our, and our watered-down, cold Christianity sometimes, I hope it doesn't, I hope it doesn't corrupt them. I hope they don't become complacent like so many of us are hope they don't get so cold and callous and uncaring and unconcerned and then so unwilling to stand like so many of us I just I saw them I thought you know you think boy it's a good thing they got to America to escape the persecution I, I don't know I don't know if I feel that way or not but it's easy for me because I'm already here in America I understand that um, Matthew chapter 6 please <clears throat> couple thoughts I'm not it's not a part of the message a couple questions to ask yourself to think about you know the Bible asks what, what should a man give in exchange for his soul maybe we ought to kind of ask ourselves a question what what shall a man give in exchange for the souls of the world what is more valuable to us than making sure that the people of the world get to hear the gospel there there is something that is more valuable to us if 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 it's not being done um, if there's anything we're holding back, we've got to think, well, what did I hold it back for? for what, what, what did I trade? What was my trade-off for those souls getting to hear the gospel? What was a trade-off? What did, I, what, did I, what did I want instead? What did I choose over those people being saved? Am I not on? No, I'm probably no. not on. I probably, I probably didn't even push the mute button off. Is that better? Got it. My apologies. Thank you. I thought you were going to beat me up. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. <laughs> thought I was about to be a persecutor for my Christianity. <laughs> How's it got tonight? <laughs> Another question. I saw I put in uh, my, my second meeting of deputation. We've been on deputation now two years. I saw a question I asked pretty provocative question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher the question, but I think you'll get the gist of it. It said, um, if, if you had to trade places with the heathen, how, would, you want, would you want those people to be as serious about getting the gospel to the world as you and I are? If we had, in other words, if it was you in Thailand or Ethiopia or, or where, where have you, southern Sudan, if if that was, if that was you there, without the gospel, would you want the people in America to be as serious and as die hard about getting the gospel to the world as you are, and as I am? Something to think about. Provo- provocative questions. Matthew chapter six. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, re- I'm gonna connect prayer and missions. They're vitally interwoven. You can't have one without the other. But it's more of a. I think this is a more of a, a message that I, I think, I'll, I'll be honest with you, the truth I'll give you tonight, and it's not mine, it's God's truth, it's God's truth, it, it's changed my life, it's changed my whole philosophy about missions, and um, it's changed my whole philosophy about, about my, my job, as a, my role as a Christian, and I think if you give me a hearing, I think it'll be a help to you, I want to be a help to you, an encouragement to you. Um, we're going to read two verses in Matthew chapter 6 tonight. 
very familiar terrain, but we've got to be careful that familiarity doesn't breed contempt. The things that we're so familiar with, we think, we un- we think because we, we're familiar with it, we think we know it, and we think we understand it. And uh, we've got to be careful about that with the Bible. Just because I, I'm familiar with it, I've read my Bible through many, many, many times, but I, but I don't even... I don't think I know the tip of the tentacle of, the, of what can, the, the riches, unsearchable riches of Christ that are found within the pages of this book. But I love this book. I love this passage that I'm about to, we're about to read. We're going to read two verses, 9 and 10 of Matthew chapter 6. I am keeping my eye on the time. Pastor says as long as I'm done by 10, everything will be all right. So I promise you I'll be done before 10. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. The Bible says this. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples. He says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I sure do need you tonight. I want to be a help and encouragement to these people. God, I don't, I don't know how to get a truth across to these people. God, I can't possibly know what's on their heart. Oh, God, you know their sorrows. You know where they are. You know what's on their mind. God, take this truth and translate it into the hearts of your hearers. Lord, help us to not just leave your challenge but change by your word. We sure do need you, God. We sure do need you, God. We need your presence. Lord, forgive us for our callousness. Oh, God, help. For anything that we've chosen over you, Lord, for any sin that we've allowed to come in our life that was more important to us than you. Lord, for anything that we've chosen, anything we've chosen over you and your work, Lord, you be exalted and glorified through the message tonight, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' holy, loving name, amen. I am. I don't know what kind of prayer life you have tonight. I I hope you pray. Um, If you're not, you're cheating yourself out of one of the richest, fullest blessings of all Christianity. Prayer is a privilege. It's a supreme, supreme privilege. Prayer really does work. You're guaranteed by the living God of all eternity who created the heaven and earth in six literal days. You're guaranteed, he said, ask and it shall be given you. You cannot pray and not receive. It's not possible. You say, well, I've asked for things that I didn't get. Thank God. Thank God. For those of you, I, I'm going to say this. Those of you who have prayed, and you know I've, you've prayed, you can look back on things that you've prayed and you thought you knew how, it should, how that prayer should be answered. And you look back like I do and you thank God that he didn't answer it the way you prayed it. God, God, the Bible says we have an intercession with the Father. The Bible says the Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I believe when you pray, every prayer you pray will be answered. It may not come forth the way you ask it, but I promise you, uh, I, let, me, let me change that. Right. God promises you in his word that your prayers will Amen. be answered. It's a guaranteed you know, we like, it's amazing how we believe when it says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But when the Bible says, ask and it shall be given you, we say, we're not so cert- certain about that. The Bible is not such a hard book to understand. It's a hard book to believe. You say, I, 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 you know, what part of asking it shall be given you? Seeking you shall find, knocking it shall be opened unto you. What part of that do we not understand? We say, well, I understand what it says, but do you pray? Well, <laughs> that, you know, that's when the, chir- the crickets start chirping. We say, well... Um, what, what excuse? You know, I, you know, I had a professor back at JSU, Jacksonville State University in Northeast Alabama. I had written an essay in him. He and him. He told me that that essay would not be published. He said, you won't get that published by Norton Anthology. I said, why is that? He said, well, the problem with your essay, he said, there's an uh, equation in your essay. He said, the equation in your essay is God created man. He said, what you might want to consider doing is reversing that equation. I said, in other words, not God created man, but man created God. He said, that's precisely what I'm saying. And by the way, that's the central philosophical premise and foundational teaching and philosophy behind every university in this whole country and public schools for that matter. I did teach in the public schools. And um, I'm not saying everybody in, the, everybody in the universities in America and everybody in the public schools espouse that philosophy, but that is the central philosophical premise of all of, all of our schools. I, it's just the truth. There's no way around it. Yeah. I understand why that man did not get on his hands and knees and pray this morning. I understand why he didn't bow and give homage to the living God. But when it comes to us, why why didn't we get up and pray this morning? What was more important to me? What was more important to you this morning that we said, well, I have so many things that that I've got to do and take care of. Prayer is not on that list. 
I meant to pray. I know prayer is important. I, I promise there's not a person in this room. If I ask you, is prayer important? I promise there's not one person in the room who would, who would deny that prayer is important. You, everyone would say, of course prayer is important. But, but, if, but if we went back and say, be honest, let's be honest, do we all pray, then it, it probably would be different then. The, the answer, the response would be different. Don't cheat yourself out of the supreme prayer of blessing. The, the supreme blessing of prayer, excuse me. It, 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 is, a, it is a work. It does work. <laughs> Prayer is real. Don't, people, people say, I tried, tried praying. Well, try breathing. <laughs> That's like trying. You know, how do you try God? I tried God. I, I, I talked to a, a man in Nashville. I was trying to get published years ago. I used to be, try to write a lot. And, um, he, um, we were talking recently. This man supposedly was a Christian. And he said, yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I no longer believe. I no longer believe in Christ. He said, uh, I had prayed and he didn't answer my prayers. He said, I prayed that he would reveal himself to me. He didn't reveal himself to me, at least not in the way the man was praying. And he said, um, so I no longer believe. I don't, for number one, I don't think he ever believed to begin with. But if he did believe, he, he has a supreme misunderstanding of God. You don't try God. You don't try prayer. It's a, it's, it's, you say, well, I don't understand the, the importance of it. Just obey. God commanded us to pray. Pray without ceasing. It's a commandment. But you say, I don't know what to pray for. What do you pray for? Pray. You, you know, think about the things that you hear people praying for. I, I praying for a new home, a bigger, better house, or a nicer car, or maybe I need more finances. Maybe the finances aren't coming in. Um, pray, pray for your lost loved ones. Pray for your pastor. By the way, you ought to pray for your pastor every day. You don't have a clue what kind of pressure is on your pastor. Satan would love nothing better than to, to bring your pastor down. Hey, if you hurt him, it could hurt you. If he could hurt you and hurt him, he could hurt God. And that's what he wants to do. Pray for your pastor. Pray for missionaries. This is a commercial break. Pray for missionaries. Uh, missionaries need prayer. We're trying to get to the field and the missionaries who are on the field, trying to get their support, trying to, trying to get their um, nation, their people reached. Um, a lot of adversaries. Pray for missionaries. Pray for the lost leadership of our country. And I'll be careful on this. Boy, I think I've, I've probably lost support over this one. But, you know, it's so much easier to, it's so much easier to criticize than it is to pray. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'd be the first to criticize if I had to be on. If I had to say what I, whether I agree with everything our administration does or every decision they make, I don't. But it's easy. It'd be, it's easier for me to criticize them than to pray for them. Probably would help our president a lot more for me to pray for him than it would for me to criticize him. I don't know. What do you think? It makes a lot of sense to me, at least. Um, anyway, I'll be careful about that. Some, I'll have some people beat me up after church for saying that. Because a lot of people, people get pretty, people get pretty angry about that. A lot of people are really against certain people, and they don't want to see Christianity about it. But anyway, I'm going to move on. Whatever you're praying for, you say, I don't know if I'm praying for the right thing. Just pray. Praise the Lord if you're praying. You're a step above most people. Just pray. Take advantage of prayer and pray. Spend time with God. You know, Jesus, why didn't Jesus, you find Jesus praying all the time? I believe he just wanted to spend time with his heavenly Father. I don't think he was asking for the same things we asked for. But whatever you pray for, I, I wonder if the most important thing that could possibly be on your list is there. Look what Jesus said. And when his disciples, they said, John the Baptist taught his disciples to pray. Would you teach us to pray? Sure, sure, I'll teach you to pray. And by the way, I think they went to the right place to learn how to pray. What do you think? I mean, they are, I mean after all, Jesus is God. I think Jesus just might have had an idea or two about how to pray. I think he knew their prayer. I don't think they understood us, but the very one that they were asking to teach them to pray was the very one to whom they were praying. I don't think they understood that. I think they understood it later. But at the time they asked him, I don't think they quite comprehended that. But here they are asking him to teach him to pray. And here he is teaching him to pray. And, I and I'm going to paraphrase, but basically long, he's saying long before you pray for yourself and, and your sickness problem, your health problems, and your, your job situation, for your, your family problems, and, and you know, all the things that you pray for, your leadership, your, your pastor, your missionaries. Uh, he says long before you pray for all the things that you're praying for, he says, I want you to pray for me. Pray, pray for me. Pray, pray for Jesus. Isn't Jesus God? Pray for God. Pray for God. He said, whoa. Wait a minute. Why, why, why would I pray for God? I mean, he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. I mean, he's, he's all powerful. He's almighty. I mean, he, he created the heaven and earth in six days. What in the world would God need my prayers for? And I think, I, I think you could go here. You know, the Bible commands us to love the Lord your God with all your heart. All, the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. He says this, out of the abundance of the heart, what? The mouth speaketh. 
And whatever's on your heart is going to come out. You can't hide what's really on your heart because what you've been meditating upon, it's going to come out eventually. I could deceive you for a moment, but get around me for a while, you'll find out what's on my heart. If I'm around you enough, I'm going to find out what's on your heart, and it'll be a terrible, terrible thing for me to go to God every day and say, God, I'm burdened about this. I'm burdened about this person. I'm burdened about this need, but I'm not burdened for you. I have many, many burdens, God, but you're not on that list. God commanded me to love him with all my heart. I want to love him with all my heart. I hate to think that there's anything that was more on my heart than God. And if God's on your heart, you can't help but speak about him. God, I can't help but to pray for you and talk about you. And I'm going to have to hasten. What do you pray for? What do you pray for? Look what he says. Here's what you pray. Look what he says. Our Father, which are in heaven, I've got some petitions to bring before you. And I just want you to know, God, I'm praying for you. He says, Our Father, which are in heaven, this is my first request. Now, before I pray for me and for any of my other needs, my prayer would be this, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Listen, you know, pray, hallowed be thy name is not a statement. It's a request. This is a prayer. It says, after this matter, therefore pray ye. God, I'm asking that your name would be, would be hallowed and sanctified. God, help me with, to consecrate your name and set your name aside. And it'd be, so it'd be, make, it, make your Name of supreme value in my eyes. God, you said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And God, what is easy for me to do is to, to walk in pride and to not fear you, God. And, and, I, and, I, and I see the, the, the full not fearing you. And I don't want to be in that ranks so of those who don't fear you, God. And, and it's amazing how Christians could do the same things that the world does. And the reason we do the same things that the world does is because we don't fear God. Amen. If we're not careful, we'll lose our fear of God. You know, over in Ezekiel... Chapter 36, God is very, you say, you want, I want to know that I'm praying about what God's concerned about. Well, trust me on this one. God is concerned about his name. Look what he, he, he says over here in Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 20 through 23. He says, and when they entered unto the heathen, whither they went, he says, they profaned my holy name. When they said unto them, these are the people of the Lord and are going forth out of his land. He says, but I had pity for mine holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen whither they went. He says, therefore, say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen whither you went. He says, and I, I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them, and the heathen, listen to this, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. Is there any wonder why the world doesn't take God seriously when we don't take him seriously? One of the top commandments, he says, what is that? He says, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And when you and I put our faith in Jesus Christ, we took the name of Christ upon us. The world, they call us, what do they call us? They call us Christians. You say, are you a Christian? I want to be. I want to be like Christ. But, but I took his name upon me, and, I, and what is so easy for me to do is to, to profane his name and to, to bring him shame and contempt and reproach. And I don't want to do that. So every day, oh God, my request, please God, help me. Hallowed be thy name. Help me. Help me, God, to reverence your name. Help me to fear you. Help me to respect you, God. I move on. God, I got another petition. I just want you to know I'm praying for you. You're in my heart, God. My request is this Thy kingdom come. You know, I had a word there, and I take another verse. The Bible says, But seek ye what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. God, thy kingdom come first. God, God is always building. God is building his kingdom. He's constructing his kingdom. God's got some concerns. The Bible says the kingdom of God is righteousness and, and peace and, and joy and the Holy Ghost. There are some things that God, are, God he's concerned about and he's doing something. And what we like to do is we like to take prayer and change God's mind. We like to say, God, I see what you're doing, but I don't like what you're doing. God, if I were you, this is what I would do in this situation. You need to see things my way, God. This is what you ought to do. But my brother and my sister, prayer is not to get God on board with my way of thinking. Prayer is to get me on board with God's way of thinking. Prayer is not to get God to see, to see things the way I see them. Prayer should be to get me to see things the way God sees them. God is constructing and God's got some things that he's concerned about. And my, and, and my concern ought to be, God, it's, it's your, what, 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 what are you concerned about? That's what I want to be concerned about. You know, it, it, you teenagers, you young people, and I'll be careful about this, but you know, you think about if I came up to you and asked you, what do you want you to do with your life? And you say, well, I've always wanted to do this. My request, my re question that I wouldn't ask you that to your face, but I would, you know, I'll ask it behind the pulpit. 
have you ever once considered what God wants you to do? You know, is, is, it, is it God's kingdom or, or are we here to build our own kingdom and climb our, our um, corporate ladder and do what we want to do, do what brings us pleasure? God, thy kingdom come. And God, I've got another petition to bring. I just want you to know I'm still praying for you, God. My request will be this. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Um, the world says you're a bunch of, you're a bunch of robots. You, you fall in line behind a, passion, behind, a, behind a pastor and you have no mind of your own. You have no will of your own. I do. I have a will of my own. My will happens to be this. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. It's a request. Because I'm going to tell you, I do have a will of my own and mine's corrupt. You know, people, you know, I was taught in public school, follow your heart. Have you ever heard that philosophy? Follow your heart. That is such a damnable philosophy. That is so wicked. That's, that, that's perverted. The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Follow your heart. You follow your heart will leave you right to hell. Amen. Won't lead you to Christ. So oh God, I'll tell you what I want. I want your will to be done. Because because if you want to know, I've got to, in my mind, I think I know what should be done in this situation. But God, I'm so glad that you know so much better than I do. I, just want, I don't want it to be done the way I think it ought to be done, God. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now, you say, what does that have to do with missions? Everything. If my request is thy kingdom come and my, my desire is that God's will be done in earth as it is in heaven, I might want to find out, well, what is God? What is God? What is God's kingdom? Where is he going? You know, where, what is God trying to accomplish? Well, go to the old King James Bible and you can find a few things about that, that God is concerned about. And I'm going to tell you, one of the greatest things you could do to find out what someone's really concerned about is to find out, is to look at the bottom line. Look at their bank statement and find out what are they spending their money on? What, where, where, where are they expending their, their resources? Where are they expending their time? And if I want to find out what's important to God, all I got to do is go is let me go to his bank book and let me see where God expended the, the chiefest resources of all eternity. Where did God spend the most valuable possessions that he had? Where do they go? Go to the cross and you'll find out. Go to the cross and you can see what, what, what is it that God desires the most. What did God say? This was worth everything that I had. My own blood on the cross at Calvary. What was so valuable to God? The souls of the world. The Bible says he, the Bible says who will have all men. All men to be saved. Even those people over on the other side of the world that you and I have never even met. He said I'll have all men to save, be saved. He says, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He says, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Even those people that were doing all of the, the evil, the atrocities to those Christians, God loves them. They're supremely loved by the living God. And God desires for them to be saved. Some of those people, you know, it would be great to think that some of those people could be like Paul. Paul was a murderer of Christians too. And look what Paul, God did with Paul's life. God wants them all to be saved. You're a worst enemy. God loves them. You know, I understand it's hard to have hard enough to have compassion on a man right across the street. People can be downright ugly, right? I, mean, I was in Wildemar, California just a week ago out knocking on doors. Had a woman cuss us out. She got mad because we, got, because we came to her door just to invite her to church. You know, it's hard enough to have compassion on someone like that, let alone on someone on the other side of the world I've never met. But I'd say this, long before I'd ask you to have compassion on the people of Thailand, and I do. I would love for you to share with me. Those are my people that God has given me to love. But before I ask you to have compassion on them, I ask you, to, would you join with me and have compassion on God? You know, who's going to hurt worse when the people of Thailand go to hell? God. He, he gave... What, what, you ever, have you ever beg, beg God to have mercy on the people of the world? You ever done that? I've done that. And I think, boy, what a smack in the face of God. What more must God do to show us that he loves those people and desires for them to be saved than to shed his blood on the cross to give his only begotten son the most? I mean, every gave it all at the cross and, I'm a, and I've got the audacity to say, God, you ought to see things the way I see them. See, I, I understand that we ought to have mercy on the people of God. You ought to understand it too. What a slap in the face of God. God has done it all. God gave it all to show us that he desires for those people to be saved. What are we willing to give? What's more important to us? Years ago, an old fundamentalist missionary, he went to Africa. He said, I went primarily to improve on the justice of God. He said, I, I didn't want anyone to go to hell without at least having a chance to hear the gospel. And you know who I'm talking about. He said, uh, I went to Africa motivated by humanism. He says, I went over there and 
says, I went over there to that country. He says, I found out that they were monsters of iniquity. He said, they were living in sin and they were loving their sin. And he said, they, they had far more of a knowledge of God than every dream they had in accordance with Romans chapter 1. He said, I thought they, they couldn't wait for me to get over there. And I found out when I got over there, they didn't even want me there. He said, I got better with God. That was a mighty fine thing you did, God, sending me over here. Came over here to have compassion on these people and to help them. They didn't, even want me, they, 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 they didn't even want to hear what I had to say. He says he wrestled with God about that. He says God spoke so clearly to, heart, to his heart. He said, yes, but shall not the judge of all the earth do right? He says, he says yes, they're, they're monsters of iniquity and they're sinners. And they're, they, they, they don't deserve the mercy of a loving God and they deserve a thousand eternities of hell. They don't deserve my mercy. But I love him. But I love him. And I endured the agony, endured the, the agonies of hell, the, the, the shame, the suffering of the, of the cross for them. They, they weren't seeking me, but I was seeking them. He says, I didn't send you there for them. He says, I sent you there for me. He says, don't I deserve the reward of my suffering? He says, don't I deserve the souls for whom I died? He says, that's when it all changed. So he realized he went there for the wrong reason. You know, you're knocking on doors. If you're doing it for those people, you keep on knocking those doors. If you're doing it for them, you get enough doors slammed in your face, you'll stop going. You know, if we as missionaries, we're going there for the, just for the people, and I believe in having compassion on people, and if some have compassion, making a difference. But if my, my chief concern is, is whether those people will hear and get saved or not, more than, God, I'm doing what you commanded me to do, I'll quit. I'm not going primarily for them. I'm going primarily for Christ's sake. God's, God's sending us there. We're going for God. I just encourage you, whatever you decide to do with your money, with your life, your time, it's not yours. You're bought for price. We're, Christ, the Bible says Christ is our life. For me to live with Christ. If, this, if Christ is just part of your life tonight, there's a big problem in your life then. You've got a big problem if Christ is only a part of your life. Christ is not supposed to be just part of your life. Christ is supposed to be, he is your life. You have no life apart from Christ. I hope you consider that tonight and say, God, what have I, in my heart have I held back from you? What have I found more important to me than you, God? May our prayer become, as you mentioned those missionaries, may our prayer become, may the lamb that was slain receive the reward of his suffering, for he is worthy. Thank you.